welcome to our first podcast for Bronco Scoop. Now, this podcast is really going to be uh, a, an opportunity for you to hear some of our Broncos or our student voices at Cal Poly Pomona on topics that might be of interest. So whether it's everyday life at Cal Poly Pomona, the academics, um, things that you might not know coming in as a freshman or even as a transfer student, someone who's been in college. Um, let me introduce ourselves. So my name is Abigail. I'm a third year chemistry major at Cal Poly Pomona. And I'm going to introduce my partner right here, Dakari. Hi, everyone. So as my partner stated, my name is Dakari. And I am a psychology major here at Cal Poly Pomona. I am a, I'm in my first year of transferring into Cal Poly Pomona. And we're really excited to be here with you all. Yes, we're really excited. So we're doing this podcast on behalf of um, Project Caminos because we really, we were in your position at one point. We were applying to schools. We didn't really know um, what life was going to be like. And especially now when we're in the time of a pandemic, we really want you guys to know what's going to happen or what to expect, what you can't expect when you make that transition into college or when you're making that decision to. Um, go to a certain college. Uh, we don't want to leave you out in alone. So just so, so you know that you're not alone in what you're going through and um, to know that we're here for you as fellow students and as uh, fellow members of Cal Poly Pomona. Yes, yes, we're always here for you. You're never alone here, even though it may feel like it sometimes. There's always someone that we that we're able to reach out to for support yeah definitely so the way this podcast is going to work is that each podcast will have a certain topic and we'll discuss a certain topic we'll do a research on it if it requires to um, we'll get different students perspectives um we're hoping to get some other guest speakers here other students so you can get their opinion especially if they're um more knowledgeable on the matter um but at the same time we'll ask you at the end of the podcast to comment on what you think if you have any questions um but go ahead and type it down below comment like ask any questions that you may have on the topic for this week's topic or for the, today's topic we're really it's going to be more of a question of the day um so Dakari, what do you think of or asynchronous or synchronous classes right now that we have the asynchronous versus synchronous. Um, this is, honestly, I came into Cal Poly during this climate of going to school, of only having online. So it's been a challenge and it's kind of been beneficial in certain ways. Some of, well, kind of to explain the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. So for asynchronous classes, those are ones where you do not have to attend lecture at all. You just have your professor will just send you out emails and things about your assignments and when your tests and all, all kinds of things are due. So it's like 100 percent independent. And then synchronous are classes where you either meet once or twice a week with your professor like Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, or maybe on just on Monday for like two hours or something like that. And yeah, so before this, before this was our only option of going to school, I personally would not have picked to have classes all online. Me personally, I prefer to go directly into class. I feel like being there with the professor and hearing what they're saying and following along, it's a bit different than hearing them over Zoom. But I still feel that the knowledge is, ob is obviously still very beneficial. It definitely still helps with when you read your textbook and then you go back to the lecture and it's like, okay, so now this, you're still able to make the connections. I would say that some of some benefits to asynchronous would be that 
you know, you kind of, you're on your own schedule. You fit the class in to your schedule. So you don't have to set aside specific time to go to class. So the con of that is that if you forget about your class, it, that's it. You know, it's really easy to fall behind. You know, your professors, they're kind of more expecting of you to be independent and only re and you have to reach out to them if you need help. You know, like they won't, most of the time, they won't really reach out to you unless like you're really just not turning anything in at all. Then they'll reach out to make sure that you're okay. But for synchronous classes, I feel like those are kind of more, they're more, I was going to say more in sync <laughs> with regular in-person classes because you still have that two day a week or one day a week connection directly to your professor. And I would say that a con of that is that you kind of have to make sure that your schedule, you're always able to go to class at that time. So if you have like a really busy schedule, like a really long work week or, you know, family matters, it gets a bit tricky, you know, showing up to class each week all over Zoom. And then also like one thing I've been kind of having, not a struggle with, but kind of worrying about. And even like when we started this podcast, I was asking Abigail if she could hear my dog snoring in the background, you know, because it's difficult to kind of mute that. Like we can mute ourselves by our talking, but the background is like, it's something completely different. So I don't know. That's kind of my take on it. What do you think, Abigail? I I mean, I totally agree. Like I was, I started Cal Poly in, um, back in 2018. And for the most part, things were, you know, were normal. You had your, mostly your synchronous classes where you'd go to a lecture you um, on your set days and your set times, and you can meet with the professors. And then when the pandemic hit, of course, it, the teachers were trying to figure out, the university was trying to figure everything out, how they were going to translate that instruction um, from in person to give you that same quality of education as they would have if they were there face to face meeting with you. And I could see how they've definitely made it a little bit more flexible for some and for others. Because I'm sure even too, for some of the teachers, it was hard for them. Um, now they were at home, if they had kids or they had family members they needed to take care of, I'm sure for them, asynchronous classes were just the ideal um, choice for them. Just because, you know, they could record their lectures in their off times, let you have them host their office hours at a set time. Um, and still be available for you to ask questions, just not at a specific time every single day. But they, the information was still there. They were still, they're still open and they're still available. And like you said, now it's up to the student to really be organized, to be dedicated and motivated to um, really make sure that he stays on top of his work. I know personally sometimes um, for some of my classes that were uh, synchronous even back in when we had regular classes um i tended to forget about them because if i didn't have lecture it just kind of yeah. went over my head mm -hmm. i had a million other things to think about and then i'd get a reminder on my phone because i had to set a reminder on my phone like look at your class to see what to do <laughs> and then i'd drop everything and then i'd have to get to the class so same thing I had to figure out a way to remind myself that I had other classes that didn't necessarily have a lecture um, but or a uh, set time for a lecture, but to watch the videos, to do the homework, to take the time to study because they're just as important as your synchronous classes. Um, it's just a different teaching format, and it's not always going to work the same for everybody. Like, for example, I really prefer my synchronous classes. Um, just because, especially for my core subjects, um, just because I definitely have a lot of questions when they're working through them. And if I have a question and I would like it to be answered then, because if I wait till the end of the lecture or even at the end of the day, I've already forgotten my question. Mm -hmm. So I, if it's not answered then, then I'm not going to remember until it's time for me to do homework or 
it's time for me to take the exam. It's like, oh yeah, I didn't understand that problem. So it's something that I definitely, um, I definitely appreciate more of the synchronous um, format. To me, it's the most similar to being there in person. Um, but other than that, like you said, it's the background noise. It's the dogs barking. Uh, I live on a busy street, so I'm making sure that I stay muted so they don't hear the cars going by. Um, things like that. Yeah, one thing also is like a benefit of not having to go in person is saving money on the commute. Like that is a big benefit, you know, not having to spend that money on gas or, you know, train tickets or bus rides or anything like that. So it's kind of, and also not having to take that commute, it's kind of less risk of, you know, things happening. So I kind of, that was one of the first things that I thought about when uh, classes went online. I was like, okay, well, I don't have to drive to school now. So that's that's cool with me. <laughs> Definitely. I, I felt that because I tend to take my classes in the morning um, just because usually my brain shuts off by like 4 p.m. So <laughs> any other classes that I didn't get in before 4 p.m., I, it was then for me. Um, so that morning drive on the 10 freeway westbound, I had to make sure I was there early so I could beat the traffic, make it in time for my 8 a.m., find parking. And if there's time, I'd eat breakfast there at school because I really like being there in the morning with the trees and the fog. But now yeah. it's just like, oh gosh, you're so right. I miss that actually. <laughs> like being able to walk on campus and there's like barely anyone there and you're just like walking in the fog. Like it's, really eerie but kind of cool at the same time <laughs> absolutely it's nice and peaceful but i guess the pro of having the online classes now is you know you wake up in the morning just roll out of bed you fix your hair up a little bit if you're going to be on camera and <laughs> just eat, get your breakfast ready and then just log in the class there's no more waking up an hour and a half before class starts to two hours definitely it would get more sleep that's a big plus too yeah. So, um, there's these pros and there's these cons about asynchronous and synchronous online classes. Um, hopefully by next fall, um, if everything works out right, we can have some in-person classes. But if not, you know, we have found a method that works for now. Um, it's not perfect, but it is working. It's getting us through it so that <laughs> we can continue our education in the meantime. Yes, it's not ideally how I picture joining Cal, joining into Cal Poly, but it's it's rolling. It's this is what it is, and it's working as well as it is able to. I'm grateful yeah. that we're able to at least still, you know, have this technology to be able to still have school, you know, because I thinking about like what it would be like if we didn't even have this capability to even still have classes online. And it, picturing if every class was asynchronous, oh my god, it'd be a disaster. <laughs> I remember reading this one article, and it was talking about how um, I think it was in the 1940s, there was a pandemic in this one local area, and the teachers were using technology, then they were broadcasting their lessons over um, the radio. But now oh I'm imagining all these different majors and all these different classes and grades level, we're all trying to get a spot on the radio station to listen into our class. Oh, that would be chaos right now in today's day and age. There's like 80 different majors that we have and however many sections of each class. That, yeah, that would be, a, I don't know how that would happen. <laughs> definitely so we definitely figured out a way uh to work we've gotten lucky we have we have these medias like uh mediums like zoom and we have our blackboard which is how we connect with our teachers and have our classroom websites um but it's, it's working out um teachers are being a little bit more flexible it's something to at least be grateful for at least in this moment definitely definitely a lot to be grateful for so i think 
at this time, um, we're going to ask you, the audience, if you have a comment, if you agree with us, if you have a question based off of this topic or a point that you'd like to add, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. Um, and stay tuned for the, our next topic, which is college myths. Um, a lot of you hear these myths circulating around about college, your career, your major, but really, what's the fact and what's false? Um, you really want to find out uh, before you go in so you don't come in and you're either scared or you're super excited about something and then you come in and you find out that that's not necessarily the case. Definitely. That's going to be a very interesting topic. I hope you guys are able to join us for that one as well. So once again, thank you for joining us and staying tuned. Um, once again, this was made on behalf of Project Camino. So um, go ahead and follow them on social media. Their handles are for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram are CPP Camino. So you can see whenever they have workshops related to um, your transition into Cal Poly Pomona, whether you're receiving your college acceptance, whether you're just curious about um, what Cal Poly Pomona has to offer you, whether it's resources, academics, extracurricular activities, check out their workshops. They have some um, pretty cool workshops led by their students and some of the staff. So thank you, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you. Have a good day, you guys.